Father God, we thank you for the move that we stand in the middle of, Father God. In that song, it says that miracles happen when you move, Father God. So we're expecting great things to happen, Father God. We expect you to show up tonight, Father God. Just because it's a Wednesday, you can still show up, God. Thank you, Lord. So we expect you to move. We're expecting great things, Father God. We expect great things for where we're going, Father God. So we thank you, Lord. Prepare the way for us, Father God. Lead and direct us, Father God. Every move, Father God. Let us be in your timing, God. Thank you, Lord, for the move. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you were listening, the song says that we're standing in the middle of a move. That's what the song says. And we are. Going on for Christ Church is standing in the middle of a major move. And if you don't know, you might want to figure it out. Because it's a powerful move of God that we're standing in. And we have to be ready and prepared for what God is getting ready to do. So I'm going to read. uh, Well, y'all can stand. It's not too long. I'm going to read out of um, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. It's a familiar scripture. It's the parable of the virgins, the ten virgins. And it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, No, lest there should not be enough for us, and you but go for us, and you but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you No, neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So, and you all may be seated. Thank you. So, in this, it's talking about the coming of Christ. But in order for us to be prepared for the coming of Christ, we have to be prepared for what's going on down here. And remember, five were wise and five were foolish. So the title of my message today is, How Prepared is Your Oil? So it says the wise virgins went because they were prepared. They had the oil that was needed. The foolish had their own plan and agenda. They had to go buy oil and they missed it. So... The wise had oil, so do you have oil on your life? Or are you going to have to go buy some and miss what's going and miss the move? You couldn't tell by the foolish, you couldn't tell the foolish from the wise by just looking at them. Their readiness and being prepared set them apart. They were even ready for a delay. So this transition that we're in is going to reveal if we're ready and prepared. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 says we're to stay ready in season and out of season. 
Not just when we want to, when we feel like it. It says stay ready at all times. God plans and we prepare. So let God plan and then we do the preparation. So I'm a server at a diner. Never thought that that's what I would be doing, but I absolutely love doing it. It's purpose for me. I get to serve God's people all the time. And so we have a server alley. And me and one of the ladies named Sierra, we were in the server alley. You know how a restaurant can go from... Nothing to something. And so that's what happened real quick. It went from empty to full. And me and Sierra had to get our stuff together. But me and Sierra had what we needed to get it done. And God showed me for us at Going Hard for Christ Church, this is what's getting ready to happen. And just go with me in the spirit. I'd say we're empty and we're going to be full real quick. And so I go back to the wise, are we going to have the oil to take on the people that are coming to us? Or are we going to have to go and buy some oil, and then when we come back, it's too late? People that are coming need the Christ in us, and they need us to know what we're talking about, and they need us to have some oil on our lives. And the only way to have that oil is through the word of God in Christ. So my first point is we have to strengthen our spiritual immune system. And one of the definitions of immune was having a high degree of resistance. So we have to be able to resist some things. When God originally dropped this message in my spirit, my daughter, Nevaeh, was sick, and she didn't want to do what the doctors were telling her to do. She didn't want to take her medicine, and so we had to end up going to the emergency room because she didn't want to do what the doctor told her to do. So before we got there, she got sick, and she passed out, and the part that God told me to focus in on, she fainted. She couldn't see, and so that's what's happening to us. We're walking around, but we can't see. We can't see what's going on. Our immune systems are are weak through the things of God. We'll go to the doctor. We'll go to the hospital. We'll go get prescriptions. We'll take them three, four, five times a day, which we should. But how many times are we getting in God's word? We'll do all the other stuff. We make time for everything. We make time... To, for games, we make time to get our nails done, we make time to do everything, but are we making time for the only thing that's going to sustain and keep us, which is Christ? We literally make time for everything, but then when it comes time to read, I'm sleepy, I'm tired. We make time to cook, we make time to do everything, but the only thing that's going to keep us is the word we don't have time for. So the first thing is diagnose and treat your condition is the first point underneath there. So you have to know where you are. Like I told you, my my condition used to be fear. So I had to diagnose that, figure out what was going on, and then I had to find a word to put on it. And then once I found the word, I had to stand on the word. I remember being in Minister Madeline's. I went through the vision twice. I went through with Minister Janice, and I went through, but then when it was time for us to stand back there and come in, and we were supposed to come up on the stage and give our names, I was about to pass out out there. And they were taking too long. It was hot. My mouth was dry. I was I'm just about to go home. I can't go up there. I can't talk in front of all those people. So I knew right then I had to go back through the vision again. Uh, immediately. And so I went back through the vision again because I had a paralyzing fear. And had I not had gone back through the vision, I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. 
And I kid y'all not, every time I would get up, Mr. Madden call on me to get up. And before I would get up, I would say, God is not giving me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So diagnose and treat your condition. And how you treat your condition is the word. And pastor and all the pastors and ministers do a great job. Pastor knows the word. Pastor Champ knows the word. Pastor Sharon knows the word. But they can't just, you've got to go get the word. You have to know how to go after the word for yourself. They can't stand on it for you. They can't fight it for you. You have to know how to get in God's word for yourself. We get on Google for everything. Y'all know how I started in the scriptures? I would Google scripture on anxiety, scripture on fear, scripture on depression. You got to start somewhere. Because I was walking through a hard season. And so I had to get in and, and get the scripture on the inside of me. And then... You might have to look like a fool for Christ. And I literally will be walking in my living room saying that I will live and not die. You have to stand on the word of God. You have to, the word works, but you have to make it work for you. And the next point is watch your intake. What are you putting in your body? And not just food-wise, what are you listening to? Who are you listening to? One thing when I was going through um, preparing this, our kids, I, I know y'all have probably heard them, they say a lot, I'm dead. Life and death is the power of your tongue. And they say it all the time. In the restaurant where I work, the young ladies, they just say it all the time. And I, always, I had to tell them, no, you will live and not quit saying that. You're speaking death over yourself. The enemy creates stuff like that, and we don't see that. You're speaking. You're saying I'm dead, laughing about it, and you're speaking death. And then I have to turn around and say, no, you will live and not quit saying that. So we have to watch what we're putting in our bodies from all angles. Who we listening to. If you can't handle listening to wrong, uh, whatever their music is out there, don't listen to it. If you can't handle going to different places or whether it's alcohol or whether it don't go. I remember pastor saying one time, when you be de you're delivered from something, but it may take a while before you can go back and grab somebody out, and I understand that now. You're not always strong enough. It's a process. Yes. So speak life. Life over any situation. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what it looks like. Speak life over it and stand on it and believe it. No matter how hard it is, how crazy it looks, speak life over it. And then the next point under there is don't ignore the warning signs. There are warning signs all the time for everything that's going on. And the word says that warning comes before destruction. Pretty much every pastor or minister that has spoken a word, they have said, it's time, time is running out, something about time. That's a warning. That is a warning that it is time to stop playing Christ. It's time that we've been praying and fasting like the ladies, like Tasha Cobb said, we've been praying and fasting. We want to move. We want these great things, but are we ready and prepared for it? Do we have the oil? We'll get over there, and some of this stuff can take some of us right out the game because we're not ready. And even though people may look like they don't go to church and all this kind of stuff, some of them can tell if you know what you're talking about or not. And so you won't have time to show, and then, well, let me, you're going to have to have something in you to give somebody. 
right then. If you, and if you can't pray yourself through, how are you going to pray somebody else through? So there's warning signs all around, and not even just here. Whatever's going on with our kids and our families, there's warning signs, and we cannot ignore them. We have to move, start moving when God tells us to move and do whatever he's telling us to do in that situation. That's just been heavy. We're in the middle of a move, a powerful move. I don't know... who went to that transition service? And I was going to leave, and the Holy Spirit said, stay. So I stayed. And some of that, some of you, some of that was happening, that would probably scare you. So you got to get some oil. Like, God moves powerfully. People get healed when like, you lay hands on people. people. That's the kind of stuff that was going on at the transition service. So if you see it by the Spirit, if that's the transition service that we were in, that's what we're walking into. So that means people are going to come in expecting, because the word says, greater works we will do. That's what his word says. So that means if Jesus laid hands on people and the blind saw and the lame walked, that means we can do the same. So these people are coming in sick and wounded and wanting to know the Jesus that we say we know. And some of them know the word better than we do, and they know God to be a healer. They know him to be a deliverer. They know him to be those things. So we can't go in here patty caking and playing with these people. We've got to be walking Christ. So the second point is we have to build on a solid foundation. And my first point under there is a daily dose of Jesus. (laughs) We have to get in the word. Isaiah 55, 11 says, my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty or some, some versions say void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So that means his word is powerful, and if he sent it out to do something, it's going to happen. That means we have to be ready and prepared. Just like he showed Pastor. I'm sure he showed him way before we knew that he was going to have another building, another facility. So Pastor had a season where he had to get ready and prepared for what God had already sent out. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Yeah, that's just like you're going to say. So it's got your motives. In this transition, I'm sorry, it's going to show what are your motives. What are your motives for coming to church? What are your motives for walking with pastor? What are your motives to even be at going hard for Christ church? What are your motives? Is your motive to serve Christ and seek and save the lost? Because if y'all know that area, uh, Pastor Lori, it's a, she said a forgotten area. So that means there's a lot of lost people in that area. And so it's going to really show what your motives are. People may come and just fall into your arms. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to push them off of you because they stink? Or you going to push them off of you because they don't look like you? What are you going to do? They might just walk in and just interrupt the heart and just walk. I mean, what, what, is it going to scare you away? Or do you have enough oil? Or I go back, or are you going to have to go buy some? <laughs> and it's too late. We go to going hard for Christ Church. They're going to expect some oil. The name itself, people are going to expect us to have some oil on our lives. And the next day, they all kind of tie together, but God said, stay in the river of my word. 
So stay equipped with his word. I walked through a hard season, and Jackie can tell you, everywhere I went, I took my word. If I went through a meeting, an IEP meeting with my son, my word, was the Bible, was right there. Scripture was right there. Be equipped with the word. It's the only thing that's going to sustain and keep you. Nothing else. All this other stuff is going to fade away. Your stature, your money, your car, your house, none of that matters. Homeless people on the street are equipped with the word. The only thing is his word. And then fast, pray, and read. Pastor talked about that. We have to have a lifestyle of fasting and praying. Some of you are like, well, how do I discern? How do I do this? Well, a lot of it is you have to sacrifice. You got to give up some stuff. That's how you hear from God. That's how you know what's going on. You have to give up something. I fasted so much today, I must pass that. My nerves and everything. I said, Lord, I'm going to have to get a little something because I'm about to stand <laughs> I I'm going to stand up here and just fall out. It's the truth. But I have two days out of the week that I fast. Wednesdays and Sundays. And then if the Lord says do different, I do different. Sometimes Jackie will call and say, I need you to fast with me. It doesn't matter that I didn't plan on it. She got something going on, and she need me to stand in the gap with her and fast. Or sometimes me and Brittany Nunley, we, when we had our 12, we would put on group me, and Brittany Nunley would say, I need y'all to stand in agreement. Can y'all fast till, uh, till 12 every day this week? Yes. But if you're not living a lifestyle of fasting and praying, you're not going to do that. The word of God says that some things only break through fasting and praying. So some of y'all guys show me you're running into a brick wall. And you keep running into that same brick wall. You got to fight differently. You got to fight with his word and you got to give up some stuff. Now y'all see I'm about 100 pounds. Maybe. So if anybody, don't, like, I don't need to, need to, not that I don't need to, but because I'm going to lose weight or whatever. That, no. Just have to pray, God, give me my way back so I don't get sick because then they're going to have to come to the hospital and see me. <laughs> Keep me, Lord. But we have to sacrifice. We have to go deeper in Christ. And the way to do that is fasting and praying. The word says pray without ceasing. That means we should be praying all the time. And prayer doesn't have to be long and drawn out. You might just be, I, I'm, I'm in the servant alley. And they call me the Jesus lady at work. But the, I'm in the servant alley, and I just say, Lord, help. That's a prayer. <laughs> Lord, help me today. Or I'll tell God, Lord, help me because my kids, I'm about to snap. Help me, Lord. That's a prayer. <laughs> Lord, do what you need to do in this situation. Or sometimes I, I'm walking in purpose at the restaurant where I work, but it's not always easy. And so I'm just going to say, so sometimes if I'm um, serving, there's some white people that I serve, and you can tell, I can tell when I go, I wasn't what they was expecting. I mean, it's just for real. And sometimes they don't, may not want to deal with me or... or Whatever that looks like, but I still have to, Lord, give me strength. And then reminds me, Jesus went through it. People didn't like Jesus. People talked about Jesus. And so I still go to them, and I smile, and I greet them, and end up giving the best service that they have probably had. And then in return, they bless me. And at the previous restaurant I worked at, the cookhouse, y'all can ask anybody that went in there. I had the word all over that restaurant. These little sticky notes right here was all over the restaurant. Because every time I needed a little help, I was like, okay, let me, I need a word. <laughs> so I need a word, Lord. I know I got it wrote down somewhere. And I had them all over. Or some people would come in, and if we had, I was supposed to be rolling silverware, I'm rolling silverware and reading my word. Whatever it takes. Because that's the only thing that's going to keep us. I have sticky notes everywhere, in the mirror in the bathroom. 
But I can tell you this, we laugh about it, but my daughter, Nevaeh, and Brittany Dunley confirmed it. She's 10, and she's doing the same thing. So when we say that your kids are watching, they're watching. And I didn't realize how much, but she is, and she's songs that I play, she plays them, and my son, my special needs son, does the same thing. But Nevaeh has been writing her scripture down. They had a scripture that they have been working on, and Nevaeh writes it down. I go to her and ask her what it is. She's able to repeat it. She got her little note card. She got her Bible. And so we can't expect our kids to do it if we're not doing it. Another thing, we legacy. I said we leave legacy. We want to leave a legacy of money. We want to leave it. Guys, I leave a legacy of my word. Because you can leave money, but if they're not ready, the enemy will come and suck it all up. And then what are they, they going to stand on? What you going to stand on when all the money's gone, everything's gone? The only thing left with is his word. Now, I'm not saying don't, that's, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but they have to have something to stand on. And then they have to be able to discern to keep certain people away. And then my last point is the Holy Spirit. So John 14, 26 says the helper or some say the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So we can't even walk this walk without the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was first praying for people because I didn't want to do that either. And I was like, I don't know what to say or I'm scared or whatever. So. When I would start praying, and sometimes parents would say, go pray. I'm like, no, God wants to pay out. No. <laughs> but, and, but before I would go, because fear, I would say, God is not giving me the spirit of fear. And, I, and as I'm walking, I say, flesh gives way to flesh, and spirit gives way to spirit. Go in the spirit. Yeah. Make the word work for you. Yeah. We have to have the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.14 says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So he's a helper, he's an advocate, guidance, and we, we look for it in all kind of different places. When the uh, answer's here, he's a helper and he gives us guidance. So why don't we just go to his word? I get to the point where I say, Holy Spirit, move and direct me today what store do, I mean to, down to that what store do I need to go to where somebody needs a word I was washing clothes and I ended up going to a dollar general and it was a lady in there talking to somebody else she wasn't talking to me so I guess I was ear hustling but anyway <laughs> she ended up talking about her special needs son to, some, to one of her co-workers so I started listening. Same situation as my son. Same age, same diagnosis, everything. And so I kept walking. Holy Spirit saying, God was like, no. What if she rejects me? But the word of God also says that you may be rejected by man, but you're chosen by God. So it doesn't matter if they reject you. You've been chosen by God to deliver a word, so deliver it. So I went to her and just encouraged her because she had pretty much given up life because of her special needs son. And he's on, you know, four different medicines. I'm not saying, you know, not to do that. I've chosen right now, my son's not on any medicine. I'm standing on the word. It says, Latre Priest Mason can and will do all things through Christ who gives him strength. He's going on 14 perfect days at his school. 14. And for some of you that don't know, I walked through a season where I would go to, I called Pastor one time because they had copes at my son's school. I went in there, it looked like a tornado went through. He had destroyed a room. 
destroyed it. They had the Tulsa Police Department, and they were prepared to take my son away. And I didn't know what to, I called. Pass, I called all kind of people. But then I, I called Jackie. She came up there, and I, you know, got myself together. But if I had given up on my son, as so many people have, have wanted me to do, he's too much. He's too hard. You can't handle that. You can't. No. God gave me my son. He's a blessing. And I can handle I can do all things. So you have to make the word work for you. And even if it looks like crazy. I mean, my son would hit. He has hit me. He's diagnosed with autism and ADHD. But he hasn't done any of that. And he's on no medicine, just on the word, on the word of God. And they're talking about putting him in regular class. And then I thank God for Pastor Dean. We had my son because of his developmental. We were putting him in, well, he was choosing to go to the class that's like the four to six, but he's 11. Well, he ended up going into the class with the teenagers. And so he found his spot. And he's 11. And he was good. He would participate it. And did, but we tried to because people are different because they have something going on. But the word of God is working in my son's life. It says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Impossible. So faith doesn't mean that it's going to look good all the time. Faith means it's probably going to look real crazy before it looks good. But you have to stand in faith and stand on God's word. So you have to have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Personal relationship. To lead God and direct you. And I go back to our transition to where we're going. You are going to have to know how to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. This past service that we had Sunday, some people didn't even know what to do with that. Well, it's going to be a whole lot more than that. And so, again, what are you going to do? Where's your oil? We don't have time to go buy oil. We don't have time to play Christ. And it's not even just about the transition. Christ is tired of people playing Christ. We cannot keep doing that. People's lives are at stake. And if we're playing Christ, you can jack somebody up can lead them into a brick wall. We have to get serious and get in God's word. I don't care. Sometimes I don't get any sleep. I'm up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning reading something in the word. There's no excuse. We make time for everything. We go to work. That's not your source. He said he's provider. So you need, we have to get in our word more than once a day. If we can go to work and we can do all these other things, we can read the word. We read other things. We watch TV. We do all these things, but then we say we don't have time to read. Isaiah 11.2 says that, And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. So it also gives us wisdom. And some of you, are, you know, you look and you don't even know what that looks like to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So you know what you have to do? Google scriptures on the Holy Spirit. Write them down. And get them in your soul. And ask, ask the Lord to show you. Start asking the Holy Spirit, lead God and direct me. And watch what he, watch what he does. 
He'll tell you where to go. Turn right. Don't go that way. Might be a wreck. Might be some bad going. Like it gets all the way to that point. Don't answer the phone. Don't take your kids there. It will literally tell you. You, I think it was uh, Pastor Madeline was speaking or praying, and she said, "Thank you for the things that we don't even know." But we know your voice, and you said, stop, don't go. We have to have a, an ear. In Acts 1 and 8, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. <laughs> so power, we receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on us. So then we can move and operate and things, miracles happen. We got to raise our level of expectation too. But then that goes back to playing Christ. He says that he's a healer. He says we are healer. He says we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But do you believe that? Y'all see pastor going through here and I know some of y'all avoid him because when he get on one and he start laying people out, he's operating under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But he can't do that without having a relationship with Christ, without being in his word, without fasting and praying, without sacrificing. You don't just have the anointing. It's a price to pay for the oil. So I'm going to end. I'm going to read one last scripture. And it's Matthew 4. One through four. And as I'm flipping through here, because y'all have posted notes all in my Bible. And this is for somebody. Job 23.10, I had to stand on this too. And it just says, God already knows the way that, that you're taking, whoever it is. But after you've been tested and tried, you'll come forth as pure gold. He already knows what you're going through. He already knows. But just stand there and just know you're coming forth. You're coming forth. And so this is where Satan tempts Jesus. And it says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards, he was hungry. So he was led by the spirit, fasted. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word that proceeds from, my, from the mouth of God. The word of God. That's what I can give you, is the word of God. And to stand on it, find a scripture that works, and something else God told me to do. If y'all will, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to be obedient. Condition in a scripture. Everybody in here is going to get a, a no card. Write your condition, and then you go Google a scripture. And stand on it. And if you do it, it'll work for you. But you have to do it. So write your condition. Like I told you, my condition used to be fear. So I had to write down, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I had to believe it and I had to keep saying it over and over and over again. So, yes, y'all didn't know, but you got homework. <laughs> got an assignment. But an assignment that will help save your life. It will keep you. It will help us as we transition. And you have to start somewhere. Some of y'all are like, where do I start? Where do I begin? Here you go. A post-it, an index card. Put your condition and be honest with yourself. If it's anxiety, find a scripture about anxiety. Mm. 
And I'm looking at everybody in here. So I'm going to come and ask you, where's your, uh, where your index card? <laughs> Did you do what you're supposed to do? So that's all I have for you all. And just remember, how prepared is your oil. Keep your oil prepared and be ready for the next season. Amen. Why they're, why they're handing out the index cards. Come on, let's come on. Let's give God a hand for that, man. Woman of God did an outstanding job. Dropped a whole lot of substance, my God. Mm. What, I, what I love about Minister Tanya is, is I was sitting there. It took me back to 1916 North Elwood because we grew up across the street from each other. And to see Tanya today. Knowing the valley, the mountains, the trials, the testings. Because of her son's condition, she had to leave corporate America over 50,000 plus year job that she had been on for over 13 plus years. She had to walk away from over 50,000 plus a year to see about our son. And as I was sitting there, Tanya, I would just be, it took me back to your mother, your father, and how much you have grown. Because there's so many of us, not just women, but men, that battle the spirit of fear. And to see you operating at the level that God is allowing you to operate, it took me back to day before yesterday I was sitting in my study at the new campus and God reminded me that I am to build people and change lives that's it period and when I look at you today knowing my valleys knowing all my detours to end up right here and to be a vessel in God's hand pastor that, that he hand picked in the midst of everything that I went through, man, my God, my God, my God, and to be the one, Jackie, that he chose to help mold and shape. Somebody that I growed up with across the street. She used to play with my sisters. She know the story, Mother Margaret. She, 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 she know the, the juju that a lot of people heard about but don't really know. They just heard about. She know. And to know, my God, I'm having a moment. Y'all just bear with me to see how much God is developing you. And it reminded me, I'm again, Mahogany, while you was up there, my God, working, build people and change lives. I don't know nothing else to do. And so if you are looking for anything else in this church, my God, I'm sorry. You are here because God wants your life changed. This woman walked in major, major, major fur. Major, major, major fear, like many of you are right now. And if you listen and do what the Spirit of the Living God just spoke, my God, from the throne of heaven, you will see your life change. She never would have thought that she would be up here ministering. And not only did she minister, she ministered with substance tonight. She actually not just preached, she pastored the church tonight. That is major growth. And I'm seeing the fivefold mantle manifest on my daughter in my presence tonight. But I wonder how many of you. Here's another thing she said. She said she realized coming through Minister Janice's class that, that fear still had a stronghold on her. And so instead of her making excuses, instead of her talking about I'm tired and I need a break, come on somebody, she got right back in class, my God. Oh my God, because she was intentional, Minister Janice. She was determined. She was hungry, my God. And she wanted to master something that has mastered her all her life. Now look at her today because obedience, the blessing is in obedience. Uh, oh my God, if y'all can catch me in the spirit. Some of us, my God, need to master the things that is controlling. So that condition, that condition, that white index coin is not just a white index coin. 
if you be truthful and honest with yourself what you write on there and the scripture that you get to defeat that can catapult you to a whole new level in your life so don't let there just be another call oh my God I promise you if you write my God on there my God your condition and get the word of God my God to defeat that condition I said it can catapult you to a whole nother level in your life will you master fear like she did what is your struggle tonight what is your condition tonight how long my God will you continue to allow your condition to follow you everywhere you go how long are you going to continue to drag your condition how long are you going to allow your condition oh my God to paralyze your future oh y'all need to catch me my God how long is that just a chord as that purpose that you got that white index card is a down go Goliath thank you Holy Ghost because whatever condition you write on there that is the Goliath in your life oh my God and so therefore if you you write your condition on there oh my God and get a scripture then you tell yourself down go Goliath so whatever you put on that card it is Goliath whatever that Goliath is you have an opportunity tonight the word of God come through the woman of God God gave you tools God gave you strategic situations and plans my God to defeat every down go Goliath in your life what you gonna do with it your condition and so as we close turn around look at me time you did me good you did your pastor I am extremely proud give me some oil pastor thank you Lord while she's standing here, if you want to confront your condition, while I pray with my daughter, take a few minutes and come to the altar. Bring that condition. If you already wrote your condition down on that white index card, bring and place that condition on the altar and pray over it. How bad do you want to be free? Fear still got you, so you are you willing to go back through the class? Oh my God, to conquer fear. Oh my God, thank you, Lord. So, Father God, I just thank you now. Father God, as our Father anoint my daughter, Lord. As I see her standing and growing in the dark, Lord. As I'm watching her, Father God, become that woman of God. The minister of the gospel. Transfer a fresh anointing. A fresh outpouring fresh revelation a stronger mantle bolder confidence deeper revelation Father God in the name of Jesus strength strength oh my God conditions what condition do you get 